Shone. Uh, this is the Shone Shack. Um, this is our DIY home that my husband Rick and I built together. And uh, we've been living in it for about a week, but building it for about two years. So finally testing it out and seeing how it goes. One reason I picked this spot within the tiny house village, I can see the park from my kitchen window. I wanted a large sink that didn't have a divider. Um, the kids throw their dishes in. Sometimes they don't get done right away. So I wanted things to stay hidden and down out of the way. And we just kept with the metal look that we have with the conduit in the rest of the house. Storage that, you know, is very efficient, uh, uses all the space. We have this hidden drawer here, Ikea cabinetry and countertops. We also use the kitchen area as part of our homeschool. And so this storage here has all of our school material in it, my printer, the kids' books and things like that are all in here. And we use these stools to sit at the counters and do our homework. Since we don't have a, an oven, we just use the toaster oven and we have our microwave hidden up here. This was just this morning's dishes. Um, the, the mason jars are used for bulk spices and uh, bulk foods and things like that. So this is a Berkey water filter. It's got charcoal, gravity-based filters and fluoride filters in it. So this is what we use almost exclusively for our drinking water. Um, so back here we have the microwave here and then this is our pantry. Um, again, it's Ikea. Um, we've got some pull-out drawers um, and some shelves and then more pull-out drawers here. This one is the one I like to keep snacks in for the kids because it's at their level, and then our cat food is down in the bottom. A lot of people are worried that we're downsizing a lot in our refrigerator for a family of four, but it fits everything, and we have just committed to shopping twice a week now instead of once a week or once every two weeks. No more bulk shopping. There's plenty of room for the kids to be working and me still to have space to cook and prepare food, and I just, I think having that opportunity to design it myself, it's worked out really well so far. We are a family of four and we homeschool. Um, so the living room is kind of our central place. Um, we have some storage over here for, you know, shoes and coat hooks will be on there soon. Lots of projects that are still a work in progress. Um, like our couches that aren't here yet. Um, they are going to be pull out couches that have storage underneath and will connect to a bench on this side so we can make like a full size bed. Um, for company or for movie nights, we wanna pull down the projector screen and watch movies together. Um, but those are being custom made so they're not in yet. Right now the dog beds are there for our two dogs. That's Andy, that's Bricks. They occupy this space for right now. Um, we've got our lights up here. Um, because we used SIPS panels instead of traditional framing, we couldn't really cut into the panels. This is what a SIPS panel looks like. So this is what our floors, walls, and ceiling are all made out of. Um, so it's the frame and the insulation and everything in one. So we wanted to do some kind of lighting that looked cool but could still be on the surface of the ceiling. It helps that we did all of our electricity interior, so it's an all in conduit. And that was also because of the SIPS panels. My husband, who did it all himself, didn't want to have to um, cut into the wall to make changes or fix, uh, you know, do any repairs. Um, but also, uh, since we were had to do an inspection for the village, we wanted whoever inspected to be able to see everything without having to cut into the walls. We also have the mini split air conditioner here, which is pretty common in most RVs. Um, this one was a DIY, so we didn't have to have anybody come out and vacuum the lines that was all pre-done. And so we were just able to have friends out and do that all ourselves. We went with this wood paneling because um, we used it on the exterior and we had a lot left over. Um, we wanted some of, of the wood look, but not a lot. So it's only on part of the wall. Um, and then we used plywood that we painted white on the other parts to keep it light and open. And I, I didn't want too much of a cabiny feel. These pictures were, um, they were my mom's and I found them in an attic one time. And uh, I decided they didn't need to be in the attic anymore. My mom's in love with the Beatles. <laughs> we do like them, but I just- I don't like them, you're in love with them. <laughs>
Transitioning to tiny, well, it's, it's a process. Um, we're still doing it. We went from an 1800 square foot house to a 900 square foot house. So we, it was a gradual process for us to transition to tiny. I have a tendency to hold on to things for sentimental value. So letting go of that has been hard. We're a very close knit family. Uh, so we don't need a whole lot of space. We are attracted to the idea of minimal living. Uh, we'd like to be able to travel and I homeschool. So it was just a, a natural process for us to do this. So this is our bathroom. It is uh, on the larger side because we uh, have used the storage space all the way across the full eight feet of the tiny house. We have a washer dryer. This is an LG combo unit and we've been using it for the past two years and I love it. Um, I can just set it to wash and dry overnight and it's all done when I wake up in the morning and I don't have to move anything over. And then we have cats so we have our litter box stored under here. This is the shower curtain track that's going to go around and we are going to have a shower curtain eventually. We just haven't put one in yet. The kids are still little and really like to take baths so we wanted something that wasn't any bigger than a shower pan um, but had the depth so the kids could still sit down and so we ended up going with one of these round troughs three feet in circumference. This is just um, a teak shower base that um, we need to cut to fit. So right now we're using it as a tabletop for folding and things like that. They like taking baths in it, right? Yeah. <laughs> because tiny houses can get really humid really fast, um, we have a vent fan right there. Um, so it's positioned right above the shower so that it can suck out as much of the humidity as it can when we're showering or bathing. We uh, would have liked to do a composting toilet, but because we live in a tiny house village in city limits, we were not allowed to. So we went with a standard flushing toilet and it's a little narrower just to kind of keep uh, plenty of space, uh, walking space in the bathroom. Our cabinetry in the bathroom, our vanities, again, um, Ikea. So for simplicity's sake, he didn't want to build those structures. We just popped it in. We've got a really deep medicine cabinet. So far, the thing I don't like is that we don't have a door. <laughs> so we have to use this curtain temporarily, uh, but we will have a door in. We just have to custom make it because the width of the door is not standard size. We are a family of four. Um, everybody has their own bedroom. It's a three bedroom tiny house. These are the stairs up to our second story. So these paintings were um, done by my husband, myself, and um, my son with, with my help when I was pregnant with our daughter, Cora. So these are kind of her, her paintings from us. <laughs> so this is the master bedroom. We have a queen size bed with Ikea cabinets underneath. Uh, that allows for a lot of storage um, since we couldn't necessarily fit in a, a proper closet, but we have the entire storage space under the bed behind one of these cabinets. Um, you can just access all the way back. My husband is 6'3", and he can't stand fully until about the middle of the room. Um, but we did want something that he didn't have to crawl around in, so that was one reason we put the bed in the gooseneck. Um, and the queen size bed, it, it works perfectly for us for now. Clothes storage is probably one of the few things that we thought we accounted for, but we're still having to adjust. Um, plenty of shelf space, um, but we have more things to hang up than we thought we did. So right now we're putting extra stuff on the curtain rod. We did downsize a lot and we are still downsizing quite a bit, you know, after 12 years of marriage, lots of sentimental things, but, um, you're just finding the most important ones and <laughs> sifting out the rest. We live in a slightly larger tiny house compared to a lot of people, but I think most people assume that we're just on top of each other all the time. And that's not really the case. We all have our own space, kitchen, a living room, there are bedrooms. Everybody feels like they have space to move around each other. And I think that's probably the biggest misconception is that we're just stumbling over each other all the time. We did not want to have a bulky ladder or stairs taking up a lot of our hallway space here. Um, and since it's just a half wall, we went with the rock climbing holds for our six-year-old to get in and out of her room. Plus we like the natural element that it adds as well. She is a very petite six-year-old, so this space works great for her. Her dollhouse, she has a little chair to read on. 
um, her books and some of her favorite bulky dresses that don't fit into the drawer. For the kids' rooms, I wanted to customize it for them as much as possible since this was such a big transition for the family. So I painted their ceilings. She has a rainbow on hers. And then I decoupaged their floor. So she has um, rose pages pulled out of that book there. But she helped me pick out a lot of the um, extra things like her little vase with flowers and her jewelry stand. She had a big hand in putting it together. Very large windows in the kids' room, partially for light, because again, we couldn't do recess lighting. Um, so they just have lamps, but also uh, for egress. So it was important for us that in case there was any emergency that they were able to get out or be rescued. And I really wanted to make their spaces unique and personalized so that you know it felt like home pretty quickly. This is the ladder up to the third room. Um, it still needs to be stained or painted or something. So it's another project in progress. Doesn't take up a lot of space. So that was something that we wanted um, and to not interfere with the line of sight into the kitchen. So it's open backed. This is our son's room. He's nine going on 10. Um, for his ceiling, we did um, the solar system and his floors decoupaged um, big cats and wolves. He has the full width of the trailer, so his room is, is much bigger than hers, and I think will work for him for a while. We wanted to have a secure but open space, so we came up with these netting walls where my husband just took rope and eye hooks and created this so that they can still see through and get airflow and there's still plenty of light, but obviously they can't fall out. There are no hazards with having such an open space. This is our master bedroom from the outside. One of the main reasons we got the gooseneck trailer was uh, for that master bedroom space. Um, but also, if we ever decide to pull this on our own, we feel more secure with the trailer going over the bed of the truck. We wanted to do something that was unique on the outside. My husband came up with this design with the yellow trim kind of separating out the three spaces. The wood at the end is a shosugimon. So it's burned, uh, it's a Japanese style of wood burning that seals the wood. And that was really fun because we got to use a basically a flamethrower <laughs> to burn the wood. And then we have the corrugated metal and we wanted to use shingles, but that's not a common material, I guess in the South, so it was really hard to find. So we ended up going with just uh, regular siding. Lots of people in the tiny house community are very friendly as far as showing off their homes. So if you're interested, Find a meetup group where you can go and help people with their homes. Um, we had workshops all the time where people helped us build our house. Um, go to festivals where you can go inside of homes. Um, every tiny house is different and unique and you can make it your own. So going and seeing them, uh, I think helps anybody start their journey. Thank you for touring our house. Um, we are the Tiny Shones and that's S-C-H-O-N. We're on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm on Instagram also as Tiny Schooling. We just want everyone to know that if you're interested, there are networks out there for you to get involved and to learn more about it. You can ask us questions. Um, we're happy to share our journey. We get to live in a community with other like-minded people um, who have been very welcoming already. And I think this is uh, an exciting next step for us.